Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create an AXA drawing in Rhino. In this video I'm going to be using this 3D model here to create an axonometric or AXO drawing. I'm going to be using the pen display mode in order to show this rather than the Make 2D. You'll find this is slightly quicker if you want to create multiple versions of this drawing and set up a fast workflow for this process. Now in order to create an axonometric drawing you'll find that we can't natively do it just by rolling around the model in Rhino. You'll see if we go onto the properties menu under the view here we've got two different projections we can look at. One is perspective where the object gets smaller depending on how far away it is from the camera and the other is parallel in which the kind of object is flattened it's more of a kind of parallel mode that doesn't have any perspective acting on that object. What you'll find though that this doesn't achieve that true axonometric projection. You'll find that the kind of distances are a little bit shortened due to the way we're kind of panning the camera and it won't give us that kind of true axonometric drawing view that actually allows us to keep all our measurements intact and to scale when we have our drawing. Now in order to create this axonometric view we actually have to warp our 3D model into that particular view. Now to do this I'm going to just select the model and group it together to start with like so. Then we're going to make a copy of that model and we're just going to move it over to the left hand side here. Once we've done that I'm going to double click on my perspective to open up my four viewports so I can see them like this. Now the axonometric view is actually going to be created in this top view so this is the one I want to keep an eye on. Now we're first going to select our model and we're just going to rotate it 45 degrees using the rotate 2D tool that's found in the toolbar here. I'm going to pick this top corner and the side and we're just going to rotate it round by 45. This might be minus 45 degrees on your file depending on which way you're rotating it but you can just type that in in the command line like so. And there you can see it's rotated. Now from here I'm then going to shear that model. We're just going to move it slightly out the way here so I can see it in my right hand view. We're going to select the model, type in shear into the command line like so. Then I'm going to pick a bottom corner point, it's the bottom left on my right viewport in this model. It might be different for yours so you might have to do it in the front but it will all depend on the way you want to shear this particular view. We're going to be looking at it in the top view to make sure this shears correctly. So I'm choosing the right view in the bottom left we're going to pick that point, we're going to pick a point directly above it and then we're going to shear it and as you can see in the top view there you can see as I shear that model it's turning it into that axonometric projection. Now we want to shear it by 45 degrees or minus 45 depending on the way the model is kind of shearing. Then we left click to accept that and there you can see in the top view we then have our axonometric view there of our model. Now this has essentially created our axonometric drawing, but from here we actually need to turn our 3D model into a drawing. Now previous videos I've done this by using the make2d function, but in this video we're actually going to use one of the display modes to create our drawing and we're going to customize the pen display mode here in order to create a new style of drawing particular for this view. Now if we select pen and we turn it on, you'll see it makes a kind of nice drawing style where it gives a kind of line across my objects. Some of them are in colour there as well um, and some of them are sort of bunched together. The weighting might be a bit wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of that pen mode and we're going to customise it particularly for our drawing. So to do that I'm going to go down to display modes here. We're going to select our display modes or we'll select the pen one and we're going to hit copy there. And that just creates this copy of pen and we'll call this AXO for now. There we go. Once we've made that, we're going to hit OK and we're just going to switch our display mode from pen to AXO. You'll see at first it doesn't have any change because we haven't customised this in any way. But now we can start to customise this particular display mode to be more appropriate for the drawing we're trying to create. Now personally, I prefer to keep this kind of paper texture off the background. This comes by default with the pen mode, but you can change that just in the viewport settings. Under background, we can set that to solid colour and then you can choose a colour and I'm going to select black for this. Now actually, sorry I'm going to select white in this case there. You could have black if you wanted white lines coming through, I'm going to just keep it simple for this particular example and have that white background with the black lines. Then from there we're going to go down to the shade settings. Now 
In this, I'm actually not going to have any shade on the objects, but you could use this to add some colour back to the objects here. We could have our kind of colour based upon the layer, or you could select it as a single colour for all the objects if you wanted to kind of colour tint these in a particular way in your particular drawing you wanted. For mine, we're not going to shade our objects, but we are going to add shadows on later. Then we can scroll down, just check on the visibility that all of the lines I want visible are shown. You may want hidden lines, but for this case, it's going to have so many lines on the drawing, it's actually not going to be able to see anything that I want to show. So I'm going to turn those off for now. And for the lighting scheme, we're just going to stick to that scene lighting. And then we're going to hit down. So we're going to go here now into the objects, and we're going to just check on a few of these. The ones I want to check are the curves and the lines. Now, these will essentially depict what the kind of line style will be of these lines in my drawing. Now if we go into lines, you'll see that my hidden lines are set to a width of two. These aren't being shown, so I don't need to worry about these. My edge lines, which is these kind of edges around the side, are set to one, and also my silhouette is set to two. Now for this, I'm gonna set that to one as well, just to make those lines a little bit thinner. We wanna make sure we're using a single color for all our edges, which is this black tone as well. And the same here. Um, for that intersection line, we don't need to really worry about that, but I'm going to use a single colour for all of that as well, and we'll set that to black too, just in case I've got any intersection lines in there. Now the last thing I'm going to do is go to the shadows here, and we're going to actually turn these on for this particular example. And there you can see it will turn my shadows on in this view. Now these are slightly hazy at first, so I'm just going to up this to my sharper shadows there, and we're going to make sure the edge quality is set to none to make it quite sharp. We're going to have no blurring on there. And then we can always, if we want to, tweak the shadow colour or tweak the shadow intensity if we want, if we wanted it slightly grey and lighter. Now for this, because I want my lines to still show up, I'm going to set it to a slightly grey shadow there as well. And that means we've now got our shadow kind of appearing on our AXO view, like so. Once you're happy with those, we can also just go to that clipping plane setting and just see what the settings are here. Now, a bit later in this video, we're going to add in a clipping plane, and this will be controlled by these clipping plane settings. So the colour will be based upon this element, and the edges will be based upon this too. Now, I'm actually just going to set these to a solid colour. We'll set the fill to be white for now, and we'll set the other colour to be black, and we'll do it with a thickness of 2 there. Then we're going to go OK to accept that. Now it might be before you take your view that you actually want to kind of customise where that lighting is coming from. We can do that really easily by going to the render tools, hitting on the sun here, and making sure our manual controls are turned on. We can then tweak exactly where that sort of lighting is coming from there. And we can change kind of how that is hitting on the model like so. So you can start to customise that based upon the particular view you're trying to create. Now you'll find because it's a warped model, you might get some kind of weird shadows occurring that otherwise might not usually happen. I usually just try and set these up so they look accurate for the particular model that I'm doing. And there looks about right for this particular view. Once we're happy with that, we can then extract our drawing out just using the capture mode. And that is just down here under capture and capture to file. In there, I usually make sure I have a transparent background if I don't want that shadow or we can keep that on to keep our kind of nice shadow in place. So that is the way we can turn on and off the shadow just from the viewport. And you can select the resolution you need and that will extract out your line drawing for you. Once you're happy with that, you just hit OK and then you can save this out as a line drawing in here, like so. We can also use this method to create axonometric drawings from different angles of our model. To do this, I'm going to go back to my perspective view We'll select our model here and I'm going to create two more copies of this like so. Then going back to our four views I'm going to select one of these models and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees this time so we have them at kind of perpendicular angles and then we've got ours at 45 degrees angles here. Now using this model first we're just going to select it there, locate it in our right view and we're just going to move it out of the way so I can see it a bit more clearly. And we're going to use that shear command again, just by typing in shear, selecting a point on my model, a point above that, 
and then typing in minus 45 again to shear it 45 degrees. And then going to do the same to this other model here. And let's just move this one slightly out of the way. Use the shear tool again and again. We're going to shear it by minus 45 degrees, like so. And then if we look at those in the top view, you'll see we've created two different versions of that axonometric view without that 45 degree rotation. We're now able to kind of view our model in elevation, but also view the roof plan at the same time. That's one final thing you can do with this is you might want to also take a section of your axonometric view. To do that, we're going to use the clipping plane, but we need to rotate it slightly in order for it to work correctly for our view. Now you'll see here, I've dropped the clipping plane in and it's working okay when we've just got it in that kind of plan mode where it's just moving up and down. And I'm going to turn it on on this top view as well so we can see it here. And there you can see it clipping that view. And that works quite nicely when I'm in plan. But when I just want to cut a section for it, you'll see here that it's actually kind of going at a strange angle. And this is because obviously my kind of object here is has been warped and so this kind of clipping plane will have to be rotated in order to match the warping of my object. Now to do this I'll usually turn the clipping plane off in that perspective mode and what we're going to do is we're just going to use the move tool to move that clipping plane to the edge of that piece here. Then I'm going to use the rotate tool to rotate it to a line to this particular model. Now what we'll do is we'll just focus in on this piece here. We're going to select our clipping plane and we're going to start by just using that rotate 2D to rotate our clipping plane and align it to the edge like so. Then we're going to use the rotate 3D option right clicking on that icon. We're going to pick that bottom corner and we're going to pick this edge like so to get this axis of rotation. Then we're going to select our clipping plane and rotate it just to align to that surface like so. So now you see the clipping plane is aligned to that edge. Now what we can do is if we move it through the model, as you can see here, you can then see that it's clipping the model correctly in section. And this allows us to create that section line for our particular axonometric view there. So then if we wanted to capture that, we can then do it like this from here and capture to file like so. And there we can capture our sectional view of this model as well. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to create an axonometric drawing in Rhino using the pen display mode and adding shadows and clipping planes to that. If you want to watch any other videos on how to create certain drawing types or renderings in Rhino, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.